show of hands from the three of you. Are you true crime fans? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I know Allison Seymour, as a lot of people are. Uh, so if you're obsessed with podcasts like Serial, My Favorite Murder, Dirty John, you're going to want to check this out uh, this weekend. Not just podcasts either. This is a big event at George Washington University dedicated to true crime. Death Becomes Us, a true crime festival back in D.C. Starts tonight. Listener Auditorium, Fox 5, a partner for the festival. And this morning, festival director Jen Tisdale is here to give us a preview. Good to see you, Jen. It's good to be seen, Steve. This is crazy how much true crime shows podcast is just exploded in the last couple of years uh, and this is a really cool way to kind of get a look at the what goes on behind the scenes mm -hmm. some of those unanswered questions and just kind of pique our interest right yeah and it's also the kind of thing that there's not a space for this community to get together and talk about true crime it's obviously something that you know it's a big whodunit sort of vibe and it's and like having live shows provides uh, a space where everyone can get together and talk about this thing because normally it's just you know a message board somewhere right. or social media and now you can actually look into someone's eyes and tell them who you think did it. Now do you think and we'll go over some of the people who are going to be appearing over the next couple of days but um, those who are the guests that people like us would go to see do they kind of find it cool to be around the other people that are involved in the industry as well? I, this is I, I well yeah so I think the usually when we have two people who are like in law enforcement, so at the first festival, and two of these guys are actually returning, we had Joe Kenda, the homicide yes, hunter. Yes, one of my favorites. And we also had Paul Holes, the gentleman who caught the Golden State Killer. And they were both aware of each other as uh, members of law enforcement, and they each had a mutual respect for each other's work, and they were super excited to meet each other. And they also both met John Douglas, who's not coming back to this one, but was at the first one. So what I have found is especially people who work in, in like law enforcement they're so excited to come and sort of like nerd out with each other about things like DNA and forensics and right blah, blah, blah. while we nerd out at the fact that they're just there I, and that we don't see them on TV or here then we can actually see them in person it's it's kind of thrilling to see again someone like Joe Kenda in person who's such a, I mean his show is about homicide right but he's a little bit I say sassy you know he's got a catchphrase my 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 right. and he's Kind of my my my. There it is, and he's a just kind of a delightful human to me, and he's also done incredibly good work. So one of the cool things with, and we'll just since you mentioned Joe Kenda, and he'll be here tomorrow, correct? Mm. Uh, he'll be tomorrow or I Saturday. I, as, as in as in the District of Columbia. As at the yes. event. Yes, yes, we're having a. So this is the final season of the show, uh, and we're having a homicide hunter retirement party. Fantastic. With, with Joe and Carl Marino, the gentleman who plays who the plays younger, younger Joe on the show. Yes, but Carl is actually a law enforcement like IRL. So now now he's like an actor playing young Joe, but he was also a cop. Which is crazy. Which I did not know that part of it either. The I things we learned. Uh, one of the big things that really elevated this whole, and I call it industry, but genre, I guess it is, the true crime uh, world, universe, uh, are the podcasts. Yes. So we're going to have live podcasts? We are. Uh, tonight is actually the kickoff. It's the first show, and it's a it's called Side Stories from the creators of Last Podcast on the Left, which is my favorite, favorite, favorite true crime podcast. And I want to say they've been doing it the longest since around 2010 or 2011. And they're local, right? No, they are actually based out of New York. Okay. And some of them are in LA now, but they approach the genre in a way that makes some people feel a little, little bit like, like, ugh, because they, they can, they do it comedically in a way that is respectful. I promise, always with respect. And they are also one of the most well-researched podcasts. I mean, they read books plural to do research before every episode. They're incredible. We've we got like a, I guess. You love them. A lot of the attention came when Serial came out. Yes. And people finally started waking up and saying, oh, my gosh, this is something I can't stop listening to. And I'm completely invested in this now. Uh, what do you think it was that drew everybody to this genre that made it just kind of grow so quickly? I think that people like the idea that they themselves can have a hand in, in solving some of these cases. There's a lot of people. And another example of the festival, Billy Jensen is coming and he's. Uh, in a podcast with Paul Holes, the, golden, the guy who got the Golden State Killer. It's called Murder Squad. And there, they only do cold cases, but Billy wrote a book called Chase Darkness with Me, which is about how you as an everyday human, you or me, can go out into the world and try and solve these cases. And I do think there's an aspect of that serial sort of brought this idea into the world that, like, you can take part in this and you can help. It sounds like an interesting mix between the people who have that mindset that maybe I can make the difference, mm -hmm. and then the people who just are thinking... I mean, this is reality. Like, this is real. You know, if you watch the, the Homicide Hunter part and you're just like, ugh, something like that happened. But it's kind of cool to see how they put the pieces together. Yes, that's 
also one of my favorite aspects is, is learning about the technology. For example, um, I can tell you right now that um, something that a lot of people might not realize is Forensic Files is coming back. They're rebooting it. A lot of people loved watching Forensic Files, again, because it's a little bit cheesy, but you learn so much, right. and you're going to learn a lot at the festival as well. Very cool. All right, so details about the festival. How do we, how do we get down there? What do we need to know? You can go to deathbecomesus.com. It's to, it starts tonight and all day tomorrow, all day Sunday, and uh, there's also lots of things happening besides the shows. We have uh, an HLN lounge. We have a uh, tribute to Nicole Brown Simpson, which was donated by her sister Tanya. We have the Law Enforcement Museum coming. We have a podcast pitch den from Bot Studios. If you have a true crime podcast mm. idea, you can pitch it to them and maybe they will make it happen. That's going to be popular. But beyond that, it's just three days of true crime if you can handle it. <laughs> it's very cool. And you can buy uh, tickets to individual events yes, too. You, you don't can. have to yeah, subscribe to the whole three days. Worry, yeah, we. To, made them individual in case uh, every show is not for everyone, but right. I hope every show is for everyone. Very cool. All right. I know a lot of work goes into it, so I'm sure once this ends, you'll start planning the next one, right? Exactly. All right. Yeah, there's good no to, rest. Good to have it here in D.C. Good to see you. Thanks Thank for coming you. in this morning. Uh, check it out, deathbecomesus.com if you want tickets. Wiz, back to you. So great. Yeah. Big fan, right? Big fan. Okay. All right.